So let me start you off with the new leadership in Carolina. A former teammate of yours, Dan Morgan, is now the GM, and Dave Canales is the head coach. I thought finding the right guys was going to be a little bit tricky. You may have not been able to get the most attractive names, but considering what I thought were some parameters on the Panthers' job, I actually liked the hire of both gentlemen. Just what did you make of the Morgan hire and the Canales hire, and what do you think the Panthers have with their new GM and head coach? Well, listen, I was a teammate of Dan's and, you know, certainly respected him as a player and just how intense he was and just the way he carried himself on and off the field. Football was the most important thing. And uh, I just think his rise starting as a, a scouting intern. I mean, Dan would pick up people at the airport in Seattle um, and, and young guys who didn't know who he was. And so uh, he started at the bottom and really worked his way up with a great organization in Seattle. Um, and then in Buffalo with what Brandon Bean and that crew has done in Buffalo. So he's kind of he, – it wasn't a fast track, to say the least. And then, um, you know, hiring Coach Canales, knew nothing about him until last year, to be very honest. Uh, he's the OC at Tampa, and and certainly we're in that division. But um, just watching the way Baker played last year and watching him, uh, listening to his press conferences, because – Leading up to games, I, I love doing that. The teams that we're playing, listening to their press conferences and what they might want to attack. And he just seemed very meticulous, very even keel uh, in his philosophy. And just doing some background work on him after he got the job in Carolina from people that have been around him. Um, they say he's the same guy every day. Very smart, very calculated, never gets too high, never gets too low. I believe Baker Mayfield basically came out and said the same thing yesterday. Um, I, I read somewhere Baker talked about how at first, you thought this was an act, how this guy was putting on. Everything was so positive, but that's just him every day. So he's going to come in, and, and let's be honest. I believe, and I think we all know, he's here to help Bryce Young become a very good quarterback in the NFL. Uh, that's very simple. Number one overall pick, gave up many assets to get him. Um, and then a two-win season last year, uh, which we, we struggled. And when I say we, it wasn't just him. We struggled as a team. Uh, we had, I think, 15 different starting gore combinations on, along the offensive line. Really didn't have that true playmaker on the outside. Adam, Adam Thielen was, you know, Mr. Reliable. He was kind of pretty much our only Mr. Reliable. Chuba Hubbard, I thought, ran the ball well. But um, we added a lot of pieces. And uh, we're going to protect the quarterback. And it looks like we're going to try to run the football. And we've added some weapons receiver-wise to give us a chance. The biggest question I have, and I think that Bryce Young could be a good quarterback in this league, but with how dreadful year one was, and it wasn't all on him like you were saying, I wonder where he is at mentally because now all eyes are on him after being, right, coined the guy and, right, had so much success at Alabama, was the number one overall pick. How do you think he's going to respond mentally to such a challenging year from a season ago? I feel extremely confident in saying – he's going to take last year and use it as a, as a learning lesson. One thing about Bryce, and if you, you've been around him at all, this was the number one quarterback coming out of high school. This was the Heisman Trophy winner, Alabama quarterback, number one pick. He's seen a lot of things. He's had the spotlight on him since he was very young. He doesn't get phased too much. That's one thing about Bryce. Um, do I worry about the 62 sacks that he took last year? Yeah, somewhat. But – Watching him play in the latter part of the season, he would still stand in there and he would take hits. Um, and he's very tough. I understand he's slight and he's not as big as everybody would like, but to take 62 sacks in the NFL, and I can't count how many times he got out of sacks. He should have had so many more. I don't think that's going to be an issue for him. I really and truly don't. And one thing Dave Canales has basically come out and he's talked about and he's preached 2.7 seconds, get the ball out in 2.7 seconds or less. Well, you do that in a multitude of ways. You have to get receivers that can get open quick. You have to call the right plays. you got to have a run game that helps you too. And that's something that I'm not so sure last year. Bryce had three different play callers, if you look at it, from Frank Wright to Thomas Brown, then, then, then back to Frank, and then back to Thomas. So it was kind of a – it was a mixed bag last year. And so I truly believe you're going to see what you saw with Geno Smith two years ago in Seattle when he had that – kind of resurgence of his career under Canales. I think Baker last year. Baker did a great job. Some of my notes as I look back last year when we played Tampa is that Baker's getting the ball out quick. There's very He's very decisive. He's getting it out quick. He's taking shots when he has to. But he was moving. He was getting rid of the football. And that's something that Dave incorporates. And I believe you're going to see that in this offense. Deontay Johnson was a huge get for us. I think Adam Thielen 
and you can go to bed every single night on Saturday night knowing he's going to show up and be the same guy uh, every Sunday. But getting someone as quick as Deontay Johnson, who's going into a contract year, and we all know how those things can play out. We're going to have some more weapons for Bryce. I truly believe that. Um, I, I just I think we're going to run the ball effectively, but I just think we have more weapons and a first round pick. A big, large, fast man, Xavier Leggett. I mean, he can really run, and he's really big, and loves football. And that's one thing that Dan Morgan's going to put his thumbprint on this team will be guys that don't like football, that love football. There's a big difference. I've played with many players that were good at football, and they liked it. And I've played with the ones that are really good, the ones that love it. And and, and Dan has done that, and even some of the guys he signed uh, free agent-wise. He wants guys that truly just love football. I just think that goes a long way. I played with a locker room full of guys that way. And the success we had in Carolina, it was because of the defense, the offense, the special teams, and those core meat and potato players that they get overlooked by these big signings and whatnot. But those are those people that you need on your football team, uh, the special teams um, and things like that, that they help you get through a season because there's going to be some injuries along the way. Jake DeLome here with us. I saw Brandon Ayuk requested a trade today, even though they drafted Leggett and they also signed or traded for Deontay Johnson. I know you're not going to give up a first-round pick for him, but they did get a second-round pick in the draft uh, from the Rams for 2025. Would that be something, if uh, the 49ers are interested, uh, Panthers trade a second-round pick, you give Brandon Ayuk a big contract? Well, that's the thing. It's not only giving up a pick. You're, you're giving up a pick with a large contract. I mean, that's exactly what's going to happen. And... Uh, you know, I, I don't know where we'll play at and all that. Certainly, I'm not in that uh, front office. That's going to be Dan's uh, decision to make if that's even a play. The 49ers have kind of shut down those uh, talks uh, already that he is not available. So we'll see how that all plays out. But I, I'm excited about some of the pieces that we added. Listen, we were a two-win team last year. We were not a good football team. There were a lot of games we were in. We just couldn't get over the hump. I, I, I see a much bigger jump this year. I you know, we listen to everyone. I say we and I, because I love football, so I'm constantly always listening to football talk shows and things like that. Um, and the Panthers are up there. Oh, they're going to have the first pick of the draft in 2025. I don't see that. I, I truly don't. I think this team is going to be a team. Now, will we be a, a, a playoff team? I'm not so sure we're there yet. But I think we're going to be a team that's going to be a battle. We're going we're gonna to make teams struggle with us, especially if we can run the football. Defensively, keeping – Evero, I think, was huge. And keeping some of the guys we kept on defense, getting Derek Brown signed. I like some of the signings that, that we did on defense. Yeah, Jake, uh, what do you I, expect out of the defense? Because that, to me, is the intriguing part because they got rid of Brian Burns, and we know how productive right. he was. Yeah, listen, got rid of Brian. We signed Jadavian Clowney, who wanted to come back home. And I thought it was pretty, it was pretty telling on his part. One of the interviews that he said, he goes, you know, I always had uh, family wanted me to come back home. He said, I wasn't ready to come back home. He said, and basically, he basically said, hey, I was probably a little too young. I was probably maybe too many other things. He goes, now I'm ready to come back home. He said, I'm ready to put on a show week in and week out for my family, for my kids to see. I thought that was very telling. Getting Derek Brown, Sean Robinson, I thought was a huge signing. Another big body in the middle. DJ Wanham coming off of an injury, but a productive player in Minnesota. Caleb on Jason taking a flyer on him. He's got some ability to see if he can do something. Getting Shaq Thompson back. I, I, I've been saying it. We lost Shaq in week two last year to a, a broken ankle. Shaq is – that's something that nobody talks about him coming back. He's only in year eight or nine. I'm, I'm drawing a blank there. Josie Jewell we signed, but we got to get J.C. Horn. If J.C. Horn can stay – stay healthy. He's a guy, he's a difference maker, a big, large guy. Signed Jordan Fuller, have Xavier um, Woods back. We've signed Nick Scott, who those guys have experience in EJ's system. So I, I'll go back to the offense. I think if we can run the ball and, and run it effectively, that's going to make our defense better. You ask any defensive coordinator uh, when, a, when a team doesn't have that many opportunities with the ball, and if we can just kind of lean on it and use Bryce's Precision passing, because that's one thing that Bryce possesses. It is a precision passing. He is very, very accurate. And if we can get the ball out uh, quick like Dave wants to do, run the ball, I think we'll give our defense some chance. And we're still a team that's going to need pieces. I, I, I'm, I'm not saying we're a team that's ready-made by any any stretch of the imagination. But 
just uh, I think this is a team that can can bother many football teams this year. The, the Panthers the last three years have been a mess. I, I know you do their games uh, now on the radio, and you're part of the radio broadcast, Jake DeLome. You know, David Tepper, the last three years, it's been ugly. What do you think he's learned the last three years, and do you think he'll adjust and change as an owner as he better understands the league for maybe some of the mistakes he made in years past? Listen, uh, let's throw this disclaimer out. I do the radio for the Panthers. I get it. Somebody listening on the other end is going to be like, well, yeah, he's a company guy. I, I, I'm going to call it like I see it. Yes, I, I want the Panthers to win. I bleed Carolina blue. I promise you, and being d- around David and listening to the other people in the, the higher ups in the organization, the coaches, and David Tepper will provide any and everything to help this football team win. I can guarantee you that. That is a fact. That is proven. He wants a winner. And I think this year, in my opinion, watching the draft, when we draft Jonathan Brooks in the second round with the 52nd pick overall, a guy coming off of an ACL, right then and there I said to myself, okay, Dan Morgan is not worried about 2024. He is building this team for the future. And I think that's how you have to build. And that, to me, I truly believe he had the blessing of David Tepper in that regard. And and so that's where we're at, you know. Matt Rule came in, um, had a ton of success at Temple, ton of success at Baylor, uh, and was given that opportunity. And, listen, just things didn't work out. And then um, Steve Wilkes had the interim job, and we kind of changed what we did, became a physical football team, and made a run uh, the back half of that division in 2022 because the division was down. Make no bones about it. It wasn't like uh, yeah. it, was, it was a great division. Let's make no bones about it. Um, and then last year, bringing in Frank, there was a big staff, and, it just seemed like um, with a, with a rookie quarterback, and just kind of seemed there were many pieces, m- m- many pieces that maybe weren't in place, so to speak. It just fe- felt felt uneasy all season long, and uh, calling the plays, not calling the plays, calling them again, getting fired. So it was. Um, this is a reset. This is a rookie year for for Bryce Young, um, and, and we've added some pieces around him to protect the asset, in my opinion. He is Jake DeLome, former Panthers quarterback. Does a great job now calling the games on their radio network. Kind enough to join us to preview the Panthers for a few minutes. Jake, appreciate it. Thanks so much. Anytime, Zach. Have a great day. Happy football, man.